Don't forget to go to ashkicking.com for pound for pound the best home health and beauty fragrance products. Yeah, live on Facebook. Say what's up real quick. What's man. going on? What's going on, Dante, Dante Nation uh, fans? Bo Mack. Bo Mack, Terrence Crawford training right here. Watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Y'all see it. Y'all hear it. Y'all hear it. Y'all hear it. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So Terrence Crawford goes in. He goes in on Lomachenko. He goes in on the boxing establishment when it comes to who he believes should be pound for pound the best fighter in the world, who should have been the trainer of the year, and what he thinks about Lomachenko by way of contrast when it comes to Terrence Crawford. Once again, talking about pound for pound status and who should be the king. I'm going to go ahead and play the actual clip of what Terrence Crawford had to say on his live stream and shout out to um, NW Boxing because I'm using his clip. I'll go ahead and give you guys my thoughts after um, you guys hear what uh, Terrence Crawford has to say. Check it out, guys. The fighter of the year from the BWAA. I think that was kind of biased, though. You know, my coach didn't win. Trainer of the year. That was kind of biased too. So I'm gonna speak on some facts. Not nothing that I heard, but some cold facts. Okay, so 2016, I lost to Frampton, right? He fought twice, and both of his fights was split decisions. He fought a unification fight, one of them. The other one, he moved up in weight. He fought somebody else, but he only fought two times. But me, I fought Hank Lundy, John Molina, in a unification fight with Postal. And they said that wasn't good enough for me to win, being that he won. He, Fought a unification fight, went up and waited and did whatever he did. Okay, so fast forward to 2017. I fight two Olympians. Not one, but two Olympians. One which was a gold medal winner in Felix Diaz. The other was... Uh, World champion, two-time world champion in a division, you know, in Julius and Dango. I'll stop both of them. I'll stop both of them. Not take anything away from Lomachenko. That's my guy. That's my guy. You know what I mean? He got skills, you know, no hate, no shade. It's not his fault. You know, but at the same time, he fight a guy and Jason Sosa that I don't want to put no shade out on nobody, but he's not that good. This is just period. He's not that good. He's, you know, he's in the same room as, you know, uh, Hank Lundy, you know, but I wouldn't say John Molina because John Molina have beaten world champions and so have Hank Lundy. Hank Lundy beat the world champion too. So I can't take no shade from them. Okay, then we go to Mariaga. He was a small guy coming off a loss. He's coming off of a loss, you guys. He moves up in weight and quit. It was too small. That wasn't no big fight. Then we fast forward. Then we go to Regan Dow. He come up two weight classes. Not one, but two weight classes and Regan Dow for like two rounds and two years. So, do you think 
that was deserving to get fighter of the year because of the caliber of fighters he fought. Now, it would have been impressive if he would have fought Regan Dow at 26, but maybe even 22, because Regan Dow is a small dude. But at the same time, he's old as shit, you know. Say he's 37, but, you know, a lot of people think he's older than that, being that he's from Cuba, and they come over here and tell us any type of age that they want because they don't have no birth certificates. But he quit, too. You know, he didn't. He he faked the hand injury. I'm not going. I'm not buying that. He quit. Why did he quit? Because he couldn't hurt Lomachenko. He couldn't get to him because why? He was too old. He couldn't pull the trigger. Terrence Crawford is the best fighter out there. Terrence Crawford is the fighter of the year. Terrence Crawford should be all that and some. Stop playing with me. Bison riders, all y'all, stop playing with me. And and if y'all really for real about everybody that y'all say the best fighter in the world and all that stuff, tell them come up weight classes and all that and fight me. And then when I beat them, I don't want to hear nothing. I want to hear me or come down and fight me or whatever. And, it, and it's a fight. And it's a fight. Because I'm kind of pissed off that y'all disrespecting me like that. I'm kind of pissed off y'all disrespecting me like that. Now, Garcia's, the Lomachinkos, the the, uh, the Spences, the Keith Thurmans, the other Garcia's, the Mikey's, and all that. Whoever, 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 it doesn't matter. I didn't fought half of them already so it doesn't matter just stop disrespecting me boxing writers all right and we'll be good and we'll be good is what terrence crawford said wow that was a whole lot to unpack and digest right there wasn't it terrence crawford one of the only fighters in the sport of boxing that is willing to call out the most feared, avoided fighters. And he's willing to do anything to prove that he's the best fighter in the world. That is what you call pound for pound the best fighter in the world, guys. I mean, by way of contrast, because Terrence Crawford, he compared himself to Lomachenko because that's the talks right now that, you know, it's either him or Lomachenko that's pound for pound. I would have to agree, especially after listening to what Terrence Crawford said, I would have to agree with Terrence Crawford. He is pound for pound the best fighter in the world. And the whole thing with Lomachenko, I thought it was pretty interesting how you have ESPN's Dan Raphael who compares Terrence Crawford to, or he compares Floyd Mayweather, excuse me. He compares Floyd Mayweather to Lomachenko knowing that Floyd Mayweather has already retired. But yet, there's another fighter that's fighting right now that's also in contention to be pound for pound the best fighter in the world. So why isn't Dan Raphael comparing Lomachenko to Terrence Crawford? All these fans that say Lomachenko would have beat Floyd, he would have did this and he would have did that. But yet, you have a fighter right now that is fighting today that is competing with Lomachenko for pound for pound status. Why aren't you guys comparing Lomachenko to him? And that's a rhetorical question because the answer is extremely obvious. Because they know that when they compare Lomachenko to Floyd Mayweather, they know Floyd Mayweather already retired. So that's more just fantasy talk. I mean, when you talk in fantasy matches, you can say whatever you want to say because you know the fight will never happen, right? So you don't have to deal with the heartbreak of, once again, your favorite fighter possibly losing to a guy who you can't stand. You don't have to worry about that. You could just sit back and imagine all type of scenarios playing out because you know it's never going to happen. But they know that if they bring up Terrence Crawford's name, they may end up getting what they asked for. And they really don't want that to happen. Just like 
when these fans, when they were calling Andre Ward's bluff to leave Golovkin alone, move up and wait and face the much more bigger and much more dangerous Sergey Kovalev. They didn't think Andre Ward would do it. But Andre Ward did just that. And those same fans that asked Andre Ward to do that, they were even more enraged and upset and heartbroken when he actually did it. So this is the reason why these fans, they do not bring up Errol Spence's name when it comes to Lomachenko, comparing Lomachenko. So that just lets you know that even deep down, that lets you know that deep down, these fans, they don't even believe that Lomachenko beats Floyd Mayweather. Because if you believe that he beats Floyd Mayweather, then it's very conceivable, at least if you're thinking that way, that he beats Terrence Crawford if you're using that logic. So my point is, it's not adding up. It's not adding up. And guys, I'm going back to what Terrence Crawford said in this uh, stream and in the interview. This is what new media is all about. You know, I started to expose double standards that existed in the sport of boxing. And now in the last couple of years, you've heard numbers of fighters coming out, calling out the double standards, the hypocrisy in the sport of boxing. You had Edislani Lara calling ESPN's Dan Raphael a racist. You got the heavyweight champion of the world, Deontay Wilder, calling out the racial double standards. Now you have Terrence Crawford putting this heat out there for everyone to digest. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one.